Hello everyone and welcome to episode 3 of our TCS F-18C video series. In this video, we'll review the Hornet pre-flight, startup, taxi, and takeoff procedures. One of the great things about the Hornet is that it's extremely easy to start up. Unlike other aircraft in which you must go through a myriad of procedures to get the aircraft started, the Hornet is much more straightforward. This is because much of the startup procedure is automated and happens without direct pilot interaction. After all, even Russell from Independence Day could fly a Hornet. This is a big reason why this video has taken as long as it has. In order to create an authentic video with no negative training, we first had to carefully model many of the Hornet's underlying systems, like the engines, the air turbine starter, or ATS, the airframe mounted accessory drive, or AMAD, uh, the auxiliary power unit, or APU, uh, fuel, electrical, hydraulic, flight control systems, or FCS, the caution and advisory system, the ground proximity warning system, uh, lighting, the built-in tester bit, the integrated fuel and engine indicator or IFI, the fire test system, the bleed air system, the inertial navigation system or INS, and even the seat functions. We first had to build a solid foundation from which the other systems will be built upon. Whereas it would have been easy and fast to simply script many of these systems, uh, we believe it's vital to reproduce all these subsystems to create the most authentic simulation possible. We'll now jump into Hornet parked on the ramp and get started. The first thing we'll do is a pre-flight checklist, and we'll do this in a left to right sweep around the cockpit. Left all circuit breakers are in. The mission computer and hydraulic isolation switches are set to normal. Oxygen is off, antennas to auto both, volume knobs as we desire, the uh, FCS gain switch is to normal, fuel dump is off, external wing tanks to norm, refueling probe is retracted, throttles are back and off, and we can set our external lights as we desire, make sure the uh, strobe is on, Gentai is guarded, parking brake is on, selective jettison is safe, Flaps to fold down, anti-skid off, and lights off. Landing gear handles down, the canopy jettison is forward. Master arm to safe. Fire lights are both out. And the left and right DDIs, the HUD, and the MPCD are all off. Uh, ADF is off. Attitude to auto. ECMs to off. Dispensers to off. IR cool to normal. Spin recovery is guarded, standby attitude indicator is caged, radar altimeter is off, hook is up, wing fold is matching the wings, AV cool switch to norm, left and right generators to normal, and the battery is off, uh, ECS to auto, temperature to about 10 o'clock, cabin pressure to normal, uh, pitot heat to auto, engine anti-ice to off, and bleed air to normal. And we can go ahead and set our internal lights. Make sure our defog is about midway. All of our sensors are off. And our right wall circuit breakers are all in. And that's a, a quick look at doing the uh, pre-flight. Now, generally, you really don't have to do that when you're playing the game. But we just wanted to give you a little idea of what pilots go through on a day-to-day -day basis. So the next step is getting the electrical systems up and running. Now, on the uh, left side here, we have the external electrical power panel, but you really wouldn't use this unless you're doing some uh, ground checks. Uh, normally, almost always, you'd be using the battery button here, and the battery button has three positions, on, off, and override. And when you place it to the override position, it's just checking the emergency battery, and it should be about 23.5 volts, and you get the indication of battery switch on. Um, but when you start a uh, Hornet, you'll be using it in the on position and be using both utility and the emergency battery. Both, again, should be looking at about 23.5 volts. And the battery itself will power the canopy as well as getting the APU started and uh, ignite the igniters uh, during the engine start sequence. Now moving to the uh, left side, we have our brake pressure, which is about 3000 PSI, which is all good. And now we'll take a look at the uh, fire test system. There's uh, two circuits, A and B, and when you run either, it will uh, close the bleed air shutoff valves, you will hear the audio warnings, and you'll see the lights on the instrument panel. 
So let's go ahead and do fire test A first. Engine fire left. Engine fire left. Engine fire right. Engine fire right. APU fire. APU fire. Bleed air left. Bleed air left. Bleed air right. Bleed air right. So that's done. It actually takes about seven seconds to rewind the tape uh, for the next one. But a quick way around that is to just uh, recycle the battery. So we'll do that. So we'll battery off, battery on. And now we'll test uh, the next circuit. Engine fire left. Engine fire left. Engine fire right. Engine fire right. APU fire. APU fire. Bleed air left. Bleed air left. Bleed air right. Bleed air right. Okay, so now we can go ahead and just release the uh, switch and we're all done with that part. Uh, the next part is the APU or the auxiliary power unit. And the APU is a uh, self-contained small gas turbine engine in the aircraft that will power the ATS, the air turbine starter, as well as giving some supplementary power to the ECS system. And the APU switch is uh, located down here. And um, once both engines are up and running about a minute after that, it will shut down automatically. And once you do start it and it's up to full cycle, the green ready light will come on. So let's go ahead and put the APU on. So it's getting a little noisy now, so I'm going to go ahead and close the canopy. Okay, that's better. So the next step now is actually to start the right engine. And you can actually start either the left or the right engine first, uh, but the right engine will give you normal uh, hydraulic power to the uh, brakes, so it's usually a good idea to start the right one first. And when you do start the right engine, what will happen is the APU will um, start the ATS, and the ATS in turn will start the uh, right AMAD. And the right AMAD uh, will then use the crankshaft to get the right engine up and running. And then at about uh, RPM of 20% on the right engine, we'll move the right throttle forward. And at that point, it'll introduce fuel into the combustion chamber, as well as the batteries will start the igniters, and then we'll get full engine start at that point. So let's try that. And at about 40%, the uh, ATS will disconnect, and you'll hear that. And then at 60%, uh, it'll, the cycle will be complete, and the right generator will be online. Roll left, roll left. Flight controls, flight controls. So those cautions you heard, uh, the first was a roll left, roll left, and that's simply the uh, ground proximity warning system. Uh, doing a self-test, and then you heard a master caution tone, and then after that you heard a flight controls, flight controls caution, which indicates that there was a, a bit of an issue with the flight controls, but we'll take a look at that here in a second. And also here on the uh, IFE, we want to make sure that our e engine temperature is no more than 815 Celsius. So coming back, uh, let's go ahead and put the INS knob to ground alignment. So this will be running in the background as we go through the rest of the starter procedure. Now, when we did the uh, fire test, I noted that doing the fire test will actually close the bleed air shutoff valve. So we go ahead, we need to go ahead and reopen those. And we'll do that by rotating the bleed air knob 360 degrees clockwise. And you actually may have heard the ECS uh, air come on at that point as well. So we'll go ahead and now we'll turn on our uh, two DDIs, the HUD, and the MPCD. And we can adjust the brightness on these. And we'll go ahead and set up our radios. Go ahead and uncage our standby indicator. 
Let's set our radar altimeter. Radar altimeter on. And we'll go ahead and put the uh, left DDI to the SCS page. Now at this point, we'll go ahead and start the next engine. So just as we did before, left engine crank, wait for 20%. Okay, so now uh, both engines are up and running, and eh, that wasn't too painful, I hope. So let's go ahead and turn on our oxygen. Put our radar to operate. Now you notice uh, here on the uh, left DDI, at the top, or the top of the bottom portion of the DDI, we have uh, cautions. These are generally in a larger font and are more important. And then below, in a smaller font, we have the advisories. And here, uh, the master caution uh, button is yellow, indicating that a caution has been tripped. So we'll go ahead and we'll uh, recognize that by clicking on it. And then we'll go ahead and click it again to restack this. Now, on the SCS page, you notice these X's. And these are errors detected in either the uh, trailing edge flaps and the um, ailerons. Let's go ahead and clear those out now. And those probably happened because of wing droop that the um, aircraft is parked too long. Now you can see that those have been cleared out. Also at this time, we'll go ahead and we'll set our takeoff trim to 12 degrees on staves. Now you see 12. And we'll move our flaps up to um, auto. And you'll see 12 on the staves, but everything else is zeroed out now. And what we can do now is we can actually, particularly during a winter day, nice and cold, we could run uh, an exerciser. And we do this by uh, holding down the SCS reset button and moving the SCS uh, bit switch up. And now we see the control surfaces articulating. And we can also see that here on the SCS page. Well, let's do I want to go ahead and set my uh, bingo to 8,000. Let's go ahead and uh, check our controls. So we're going to go 24 back, 3 forward, 25 to the left, 25 to the right, and 30 on the rudders. I'm going to go ahead and set up my tack end now. So transmit receive. It's on. Clear and we're at 44 x-ray. And now we have good indication there and also set up my uh, course to the runway and that will be I believe it's 880. Okay, that looks good. And also I'll go ahead and set up my Zulu time on the HUD. And that looks good. Let's inspect AP. And I'm going to go ahead and release my uh, parking brake. Anti-skid to on. Flaps back to half, lights on, and because we're operating from a field, I'll, I'll set my hook bypass to field. And 
And now we'll go ahead and put my INS to nav. And do a last uh, check around the cockpit. Okay, I think we're good. So I'm going to go ahead now and change my left DDI to the uh, takeoff checklist. And my right to the SCS page. Now, up here on the HUD, we have uh, NWS, and that stands for Nose Wheel Steering. And this will allow our rudder pedals to control the nose wheel. And if you hold down the nose wheel steering button, you go to nose wheel st steer steering high, and this will give you a tighter uh, turn radius and very useful when you're on the carrier. So I'll go ahead and uh, start pushing our th throttles forward. And generally, you should be taxing around 75%, uh, percent, but um, rather than keep you guys um, bored watching me taxi, you know, push it up a bit. And I'll use the uh, tow brakes to uh, brake prior to hitting the uh, threshold. So at this point, let's go ahead and arm up the ejection seat, uh, tidying up our straps. Do one last check around the cockpit. Yeah, let's go ahead and take the runway. Okay, we'll bring her to a stop, a line down the middle. And I'll change my left DDI to the HUD page now. We'll keep the right on the SCS and the MPCD on the HSI. At this point, I want to go ahead and hold down the brake and run the throttles up to 80% and check my values. Go ahead, wipe the controls. Uh, EGT looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and release the brake and full burner. Now the uh, Hornet center gravity is uh, pretty far forward, so she really does not want to rotate. But you want to rotate to about uh, 7 degrees. Let her fly off. Gear up. Turn up, turn up. Turn up, turn up. Then flaps up. And generally you want to make sure you have your gear up prior to 240 knots. And that is a look at the uh, pre-flight, uh, the startup, the taxi, and taking off in the Hornet. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.